All right, it's like 100 degrees, so we're going to get through this uh, short reviews column. Uh, I write one of these uh, every week or two, usually every week, uh, and just try to keep up with the new releases as best as I can. Sometimes my thoughts are short, sometimes they're just stupid as fuck, and sometimes it's poorly written. It's because I'm just kind of trying to push out as much as I can to sort of uh, just try to keep up with what's going on. Um, if you don't like it, fuck right off, you know? Uh, so not a lot of deep thoughts off, up front. I think that Exhumed is a great band that have always sounded a bit like Carcass on purpose, and they're great at it. I think this record is one of their best. Uh, I had a lot of fun listening to it. I think it sounds better than any of their records. Uh, the last few, I you know, Slaughter, Slaughter Cold is kind of my record with Exhumed, and I know that's kind of weird because there's they've got some better ones for most people, but uh, that's kind of my record with them. And I think this one's even better. So uh, I love Necroticism, Discanting the Insalubrious. It's one of my favorite sort of death grind albums, if that's what you want to call it. So this kind of gives me that vibe all over the place. And uh, they, they called in some uh, ex-members to sort of add to these songs. I think it was really successful. I think that, you know, Mike Hamilton's one of my favorite drummers. Uh, it's just to see live or just uh, on a record. I think he does a great job here. And that stands out for me. Otherwise, I think it, like an Exhumed record is just kind of, I hate to say it. I really hate to say it, but it's just kind of a fun record. And I had a great time with it. Sorry to be like a, a fucking dork like that, but it, it was good. Um, I didn't have as good of a time with Sarkator's album. I think... Uh, I don't really get what this band is. Um, they started out as sort of a death thrash metal band, uh, referencing sarco everything from Sarcophago to Creator, for their name even. And uh, it seemed like they were just kids really just enamored with thrash metal and death thrash and all that. And it was awesome. And that first record just turned out to be just okay. It kind of had a, a lot of extra ideas. It didn't really work. But, uh, you know, I was kind of into it. I was I was excited to see what Alkahest was all about. And then it turns out to be sort of like a... Uh, like a punkish... Black metal-influenced rock record with a Death Rash song that starts it out. And I'm, I'm not being like a jerk here. It's just like, what is this record all about? I, I don't... I just didn't get it. Uh, there's a little bit of Merciful Fate. There's a little bit of In Solitude. Um... I just don't really like, it's kind of like if you liked Watan, Watan but uh, kind of liked, you could only play punk music, so you kind of met somewhere halfway in between. Um, it's okay. I, they're, they're, it's an hour long. Like, it's a full hour long, and the songs are very long, and they just don't really know what they're doing. They're, they're, they don't go anywhere, and uh, it's like I listened to it a few times. I, I was... It, it was all right, uh, but it it wasn't a death rash band, and it I, I I really just didn't get this album. Uh, so nothing really against it. It's just like it, that first song is like, hey, we're a death rash metal band or a black thrash metal band, and then it, they sort of flip the script in a weird way that is just like I don't I don't understand. It, we went from like like cool death thrash metal band to kind of a bad garage band. So, um, I've got similarly negative thoughts for sorted blade. I like it's, um, I, I like the idea. I think that other bands have done it better. And this was, seems a very rushed, uh, like they don't, they're not fully capable of, uh, this, it sounds a bit like a demo with a little bit of like, uh, uh, sort of like Warlord or, or Influences or something like that. Uh, it's a Swedish band. They play what they call epic heavy metal. It really just sounds like soft rock, uh, adult-oriented rock, uh, with some like heavy load influences or late uh, new wave of British heavy metal influences. The melodies are... It almost sounds like 90s alternative rock to me at times, or, or late 80s alternative rock. Uh, not the edgy stuff, but like the, the actual pop music. Um, and then the title track from the album has a guitar hook that is just so directly stolen, or just maybe it's an ode, or 
maybe it's a cover I didn't understand, but uh, it, not only is that bad enough, but then they've got this, they have this way of layering vocals where it just, the album hasn't been produced. So, it, uh, you know, I hate to sit there and be negative about, and rather just pass by instead of having anything to say, but this is just crazy not to the standard this label usually is. So I, I don't really, I don't get why this record came out. I think it needed way more time. And uh, it just sounds like uh, the demo stage for a band who, uh, they have an idea, but they're just not able to do it yet. Um, so take that as you will. It, you know, it doesn't really matter what I have to say about it. Uh, kind of on the other end, another Swedish band, the third in a row. Uh, this one rules. I, th I think Witchblade is great. I like the first album back in the day. I think Ma uh, Monskin uh, is uh, one of the best heavy metal albums out this year in traditional heavy metal. Um, you know, maybe that's hyperbole to most people, but, uh, it's, it really ticks a lot of the boxes for me where we've got a little bit of like a, a Judas Priest influence from the, the 70s stuff. We've got a little bit of like that, the self-titled Quartz album, uh, and, uh, I even like early Riot. I, I mentioned one of the songs here sounds a little bit like Swords and Tequila in terms of the melody. Uh, so there, it's a lot of the things that I really love about traditional heavy metal all happening at once and uh they keep it at uh, half an hour and they just have a a good time with it it's sort of that uh just enough british rock just enough british heavy metal and then a full like uh swedish accent to sort of camp it up and tie it together i, I thought it's just a cool record it's the kind of record i like to pick up and listen to all evening and it's probably what i'll do when i'm done talking uh to the fucking camera here uh so after all is a it's a thrash metal band that formed uh off the uh, end of the 80s uh they, they they've been in some other bands and uh they're based out of belgium and uh they've put out several records uh, i had never really uh, i'd heard i've seen them in catalogs but i've never like checked them out and this record is more of a uh it's something a bit new for them, not necessarily in terms of style. They've been sort of a power thrash metal band for a while. Uh, but this record uh, touches upon um, uh, more of so, more so the uh, more aggressive sort of uh, early 90s power metal uh, or just 80s power metal in general, where there's uh, a real focus on thrash metal riffs and sort of Agent Steel style vocals. Um, and I don't mean just 80s Agent Steel. I mean some of the more modern stuff too, which was a little bit more layered and anthemic. Uh, so there's too many songs in this record. It's a little bit too long, but it is a style that I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, so uh, I had a good time with it. I think that if they just cut like two or three songs off of it, we kind of get the idea with the melody and sort of the those structures begin to repeat a bit towards the end. So uh, I just needed them to switch it up in terms of introducing either different types of riffs or different types of vocal melodies and arrangements to keep me going for like the full length of the album. I think it's still a really good album or, or a cool sounding album. Like uh, for me, this style, like it sort of peaks at 1990. I, I, I think that like uh, uh, once um what was it like the first uh the first couple of uh iced earth records that's about as far as i'll go with power metal and i just like the 80s stuff so they take that with a grain of salt uh sumerian possession is a a mexican death crust band from members of infesticide and in obscurity revealed yeah and ravenous death so uh, bands you'd probably know if you follow like Blood Harvest and uh, Memento Mori. Um, so this is pretty much sort of the, well, I've written a lot about Death Crust, so you could kind of figure where I'm coming from, but this is more the sort of uh, D-beat plus their style of death metal, which has a little bit of a black metal, uh, what I would consider black metal guitar techniques. Um, but it is very much Death Crust uh, as a 
just sort of as a rule. There's just four songs here. They're just getting started with the band. I think it's a, it's a cool sound. It's a fairly standard sound, but not a bad one. And uh, I'm always up for more of this style. I think that needs to continue, and I'd like to see more bands contribute to uh, death metal and punk in various mixtures because it really energizes... Um, it tends to energize our songwriting both ways and their other projects and this type of side project. So, uh, Demagogue is a solo project from the former bassist from Atre Billis. And uh, this is a experimental death metal album. Uh, we could say Black and Death. I find it just more death metal. Um, and he, yeah, he's got, a, I think, another vocalist in here too. Uh, yeah, Brendan Campbell. Uh, so for the way that uh, late 90s and early 2000s Obscura was playing with chunkier grooves and syncopating them at odd time signatures and uh, kind of marrying the sort of ultra down-tuned, uh, maybe even Meshuggah influenced movement, uh, but translating it to an old school death metal sort of mindset. You kind of get that feeling that they're chopping away at it, but also thinking of, you know, like they, they've certainly listened to a bit of Portal and there's plenty of other lineage for this type of music otherwise, but it does feel like um, sort of uh, what comes naturally from a guitarist who is programming a beat and sort of getting to it and then adding the vocals later. I, I think that's, we, we get a lot of this sort of motoric and atmospheric and sort of uh, gnarly uh, death metal from a lot of artists or guitarists who are just kind of doing that. I think in this case, the bass tone is pretty satisfying and loud. I think the grooves are pretty cool. There's some kind of like hardcore-ish bits in here I don't like, but uh, overall it's a pretty good record. And uh, it's cool to see him going for something different um and uh yeah i enjoyed listening to it a few times uh i probably could have given it a little bit higher score but i still think it was yeah kind of the general recommendation is it's pretty good maybe for a very specific niche of taste um and then finally we landed martyred uh the relegation uh let's see what can i even remember about martyred so you see the John Zig painting. I think it's one of one of the better John Zig paintings I've seen in a while. I love the detail on it. I like the image. Um, and these, oh, okay, these guys are out of Austin, Texas. They're um, sort of they come from that era of brutal death metal uh, where it was just getting big. They still have some black and death metal ideas too. So think of like the age of both Deeds of Flesh, but also Nile and. Um, like Lecherous Nocturne, some of that stuff that happened around the same time. These guys kind of kicked up in about 2003, I think, and then they, they kind of dropped after 2010, after maybe an EP. And uh, it feels like they're kind of pulled out of that time and then sort of touching upon that standard again, which is still relevant now, uh, of just brutality and uh, sort of morbid angel influence, uh, which... For me, it pulls together really well. It's a good album. Uh, I just, you know, it's it's kind of like when I talk about thrash metal, my scores are a little bit lower because I've listened to so much of it and my standards have sort of deformed over time to where this meets a very high standard. I think from the art to the songwriting to the style, everything is very good. I just, I literally have just like a hundred CDs stacked up and, and, and a, I know, on a shelf right next to me that are to that standard or better and uh, maybe a hundred more. So I think it's a, a cool record. I don't know what makes it stand out that much. So that's kind of where the score comes from. It, it's still to a very good standard and I enjoyed it quite a bit. So I think that was just eight of them this week. Uh, you know, I hate to like neg records and just be a, a, a dick, but uh uh, sometimes it's just a, a matter of just telling how you actually feel. And if you don't like it, go away, man, you know. Uh, so see you later.